Hey guys, the first game of the new year. Happy New Year, by the way. It's 2021 officially. The Pumas versus the Lions, they are playing 2 o'clock. It's a strange time, but everything's being played on Saturday. So just look at the times because it might be strange times then. A little bit weirder than usual. If we do get into the log, the Pumas, they are still second to last. The Lions, they are third place. They've been on a roll and a five-match winning streak. So they're in a good position. They'll probably want to get points from this to maybe get into second place. Maybe the Western Province is playing the Cheetah. So that's also going to be very important for the log going into the last round of Super Rugby. The Pumas, they have still only beaten the Griqua so far. No other team so far that they have beaten. The last game that they have played, they lost to the Cheetahs by four points. Very close game, actually. And the Cheetahs, they are in great form at the moment. The last game that the Lions played, they beat the Sharks by 15 points. Quite a convincing victory. They played really well. The Sharks fans are quite unhappy with their team at the moment after that Lions and the Cheetahs loss. But... The, the Lions, they are really in better form. AJ Jacobs, he's the referee for this one. He could be questionable in some games. If you go by in the history of these two teams, it is in the favor of the Lions. Rain is expected though, so both teams like running with the ball. Mistakes may happen, so we'll see what type of tries may come in this one. Going into the teams up front, no changes for the Pumas in their front row. They've been scrumming quite well, especially Ich Prinsloo at number three. Vian Harps comes in at number three for the Lions, making his official uh, Curry Cup debut for the Lions. But he has played for them before in the Super Rugby Unlocked, as far as I have it. You can maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Dylan Smith, he continues at number one. Jaku Fusaki at number two. If I have to be honest, both teams' hookers have the tendency of overthrowing at lineout. Sometimes there is issues over there. So that's somewhere that we might see mistakes in the game. Getting to that mistakes at line-out time, you get Willem Alberts and Ori at number 4 and 5. That is a partnership that is growing. Alberts, he's getting back into his proper form on the park. He is playing like a flanker, like he is the bone collector. Then you get Ori at number 5. He's still probably one of the better number 5s in South Africa. They are up against Janse van Vieren and Landsberg, who is back at number 4. That does better the chances for the Pumas at line-out time with Landsberg back there. Uh, unfortunately, Leroux Roots is injured yet again this season. Unfortunately, that guy has just had a horrible spell of injuries so far. Meaning Janse van Vieren, he's captaining again. The number sixes is Jakko Kriel versus Martens. Jakko Kriel is finding form as well for the Lions. You get a couple of runs down on the, fl uh, down on the wing from him as well every now and then. And obviously... The breakdown king that he is, he'll always try and steal the ball. Then you get Chatuka at number 7 versus Makondwana at number 7. He's one of the guys that has really stood out so far for the Pumas for me. I don't know how long he's still going to be there, but really a guy to look out for. He's a very strong runner of the ball and a good tackler as well. A guy that plays very similar to Makondwana is Willy Engelbrecht at number 8. He is up against Len Massein. Two tough guys up against each other. Willy Engelbrecht, I'd say, has a little bit of an edge there, a little bit better. At number 9's Andre Warner, he's in good form. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, he hasn't really been picked all season long. Now, all of a sudden, he finds himself in great form after being picked once. And, well, now he's con continuing at that number 9 position. Gunter Schmitz, he comes back at number 9 for the Pumas. He's probably one of the informed number 9's in South Africa. One of the better ones, really. I'm honest about that. He partners up with Devin Williams. Uh, Devin Williams is up against Yankees. So Williams, he's actually a fullback playing out of position for most of this Curry Cup season so far because of the injuries that the Pumas have gotten at number 10. So he is kind of settling in a little bit better at the moment. Yankees, he's up against him now. So that's tough competition for Williams to be up against. Mugajima, he's back at number 12 for the Pumas. He's a tough runner with the ball, very strong runner. Up against Dan Krill, who's also... He's recently come back from his injury, so still finding his form. At number 13, both Kronje and Similane, guys that can find a gap any time of the day in that game. Kronje, he's gotten a couple of good tries so far this season of finding gaps. Similane, he's the guy that just sidesteps anyone. He likes stringing together like one or two or three sidesteps in a game and getting a try for the guys next to him. On the wings, nothing has changed for both sides with Obi and Talyard. Uh, both of them have been in good form. Talyard, he did, has a tendency of getting a lot of meters 
for his side. Pinar and Skosan, they are in form as well. Now, earlier in the year, I said they weren't in good form, but that was just because the whole side wasn't in good form. At number 15 for the Lions, a guy that you should really take into reckoning, Tian Swanepoel with his long range kickers kicking. He can get him over from 60 meters, probably more as well. So that's a guy that the Pumas have to look out for. I, I wonder from you guys, do you think he has a shot of making it into the Lions tour? Yes, probably not the best 15 overall in South Africa, but those long range kickers or kicks that he can make is something that is always going to be weighing on the mind of the opposition if you do pick him. On the benches, there's quite a bit of changes for both teams. Carlos Sari comes in for the Lions. Swart comes in for the Pumas. I think he's going to make his debut for the team if he does come on. Francois Kleinans in September, they find themselves on the bench. Tian Boetes, he's been impressive. The youngster, he's been doing his thing over the park. And then Fisaghi and Wayne van der Bank, two centers that can also bring some edge to the Pumas attack if they do come on. The substitutions for the Lions is quite strange. They do go with a 6-2 split, meaning they do want to dominate up front with the pack. Meaning Marnes Koeman and Wilhelm van der Slijs are the two flankers up there. Manuel Ras, he will also come up. For the Pumas though, their bench, as I have it, it's four forwards and four backs. I don't know, that's what I could find online. It looks strange. I don't know, there's only one prop on the bench, so problems might arise if their one prop does get injured. Guys, in this game, I do see the Lions getting a win here. They've been in great form. The Pumas, they are also on the up, but the Lions will want to get a win here because it is important for them because their next game and their last game is against the Bulls, and that will be a lot tougher for them. I reckon the Lions buy 12 points in this one. Let me know your prediction down in the comments below. Also, check out these videos here next to me, and then I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.